Hey everyone, Gary James here. Welcome to Tampa Tuesday episode 19, coming up on the big 2-0. Um, today, just three events I want to go over with you. Uh, the first, and it, they're both on Saturday and Sunday, or the, they're, they're between Saturday and Sunday. I'm just going to get to them real quick uh, before we get to our special guest, Chris Lazar who is the man who you need to know if you are have any needs in regards to home improvement. Um, so anyway, uh, the three events that we got this weekend, one is on Saturday, it's a kid-friendly event, absolutely free to go and learn, and is uh, this really cool event at Nutrition Smart in Tampa, and uh, it is a fruit sushi class. So they're gonna teach you how to make like how to take fruit, make it look like sushi. And it's really cool because you get to bring the kids, everybody learns. It's a nice little, you know, something to do on a Saturday that's not gonna cost you a dime. Go and learn, I'm sure they probably have a, um, some sort of like hands-on thing that you might be able to do. So they do ask that you call and make reservations, but if you just wanna go show up and learn and watch and try and find something cool to put in your kid's lunchbox, um, they're going to be doing that for you. That's gonna be Saturday, 11 a.m. at Nutrition Smart in Tampa. On Sunday, we got two events going on. The first event is actually this really cool, I'm always keeping an eye on the Oxford Exchange, I really like that place. And they're having a uh, an art exhibit for a photographer, does really cool black and white stuff. Um, it, they call it their Artist Spotlight, it's at 1 p.m. It's gonna be, it's gonna focus on an artist. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I did look at some of his work, it's really cool. He's very good at this um, long exposure black and white photography. I really appreciated it. I would love to go out and see it. Um, so that's gonna be 1 p.m. at the Oxford Exchange. Check that out. And um, the next event, it's a, it's a paid event. It's not a free event, um, but it was too cool for me not to include. It's a young adult dodgeball, and it's gonna be at Sky Zone. So it's like dodgeball and trampolines. It's gonna be at Sky Zone in Tampa. That's closer to Brandon, right off Adamo Drive. Um, so I highly recommend if you're looking for something to do to uh, if you just want to like beam someone with a dodgeball and you know it's been a while and you just want to do that uh, go ahead and check out the link above or below it's going to be in the description somewhere go ahead and check that out and um, feel free to uh, tag us if you are in if you or tag me because I'm running this for my personal brand now um, but uh, if you are interested in any of those events and you go and check it out let me know how it goes. I unfortunately am gonna to be too busy all weekend to be able to attend any of those things. But um, if you do, let me know how it goes. All right, so uh, again, special guest, Chris Lazar, and um, uh, we got episode 20 coming up. Uh, let me know what you want me to do for episode 20. I'm hoping to have something super special for you guys. Um, and in the meantime, uh, we'll get to our interview. Take it easy. <laughs> all right, so I like this banner, so we're just gonna get this started. Hey everyone, welcome to Tampa Tuesday, episode 19. If you're seeing this before episode 18, it's my fault because episode 18 is recorded, it's just not edited because I don't get paid to do this, I just work. And so episode 18, I did something really cool. If you haven't seen it already, what I did was I pretty much I took this camera that I'm filming this with, followed myself around all day, and it was really good for my ego. Nice. <laughs> so, so I'm here with Chris. Chris, what's your last name? Lazar. Chris Lazar of Visual Enhancements Inc. You can follow him at VE Inc. VE dot Inc. VE on dot Instagram. Inc. Suggest you go over there now. Of course, I'll put some special ding in there later with his with his handle and all that uh, nice. contact info. But um, because you are the first person I've ever met that does anything kind of like what you do. Why don't you explain, when somebody asks you, what do you do for a living, what do you tell them? Well, we are a painting slash landscaping company. We started um, our company back in 2005, mm -hmm. strictly just painting. Right. Um, with the goal and the dream and the vision to start landscaping, get into real estate, and kind of be the total curb appeal right. uh, company. Right. From start to finish. And, and you know I'm in real estate. Yes. So curb appeal, how underestimated is curb appeal? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I have this conversation with, with homeowners right. and real estate agents for that matter, uh, especially new ones, um, weekly. Right. Uh, 
most people they, they get sticker shock, right? right? So they so a real estate company will come in and they'll say, We gotta paint the house in order for it to sell. So we're gonna paint the inside, we're gonna paint the outside. And then, you know, everybody's working on a budget. Right. Um, you don't wanna spend five grand on Especially whenever yeah. you're thinking, yeah. maybe I'll sell this house. Right. On something in a you're couple gonna of days. leave, yeah. Right. So why should I invest in it? Um, but the very first thing that people see when they come to a house is the outside your right. curb appeal before they get inside if they're turned off from the outside mm -hmm. once they get inside they can't vision their stuff right because they're already set back from the from the outside 100%. so we have um you know being in business since 2005 we had to try to separate ourselves right. from the pack so to speak, right? There's a million painting oh companies. My gosh, yes. And there's a million. I mean, there's a million. I can't drive to Wawa without passing a landscape Land truck. <laughs> right. So, so you got landscapers out there. You've got you've got painters. I mean, just construction workers in general. There's a million of them. Right. There's plenty of work for everybody. Just like in real so estate. It's a huge pie. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and since 2005, my partner and I have basically um, tried to figure out how we could set ourselves right. Above. So I don't, I don't want to talk about that um, before. Like the only, re the biggest thing I want you to talk about and, and especially share with the audience is like making the leap. Right. Because, okay. You know, I know probably that 2005, yeah. 2009 area was yes. probably so, the hardest time of your life. They, but before that, before that, um, because I, I have a value proposition with my, with my clients, with the right. people that I work with as well. And it's, you know, my, the strengths I bring to the table. I'm a better negotiator than I give myself credit for. I don't really talk about that mm -hmm. um, because you never know what's going to happen. Right. And but the other one thing I'm always confident on is that I'm a numbers guy. Right. I can spot a deal. Right. I, no problem. I can spot a deal. Probably better than anybody I know. It's just my personal skill set. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I can't sell that. Like, it's nobody cares about that until no. even though that. So I can literally save somebody a hundred bucks a month for 30 years, which comes out to a lot of money. Right. But nobody cares about that until it's, so So knowing that you were really good at what you brought to the table, that what you brought to the table was better, how did you, how did you, essentially how did you sell that? Um, well, <laughs> trial and error, you know yeah. I mean? We, 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 we have gone through like the stocks, I mean, up and down, I mean, we had, great weeks where we brought in lots of money when we were just two men in a truck right yeah, it was just him and i mm -hmm. um and we would go from job to job and job to job and we'd make so much money and then the next two weeks we'd make like virtually nothing and we're like oh my god we're getting killed mm -hmm. and between 2005 2009 mm -hmm. awful times so our motto was um you know we always wanted to start our own business right it's funny how my partner and i <laughs> met um we're originally from pennsylvania both of us no way what area pittsburgh Okay. I'm so you're South you're Jersey. like South Jersey. Yeah, exactly. Area, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you already know. So I mean, that's cool. Like he knows my spiel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I've done my research. I've right? done my homework. Good so. man. Good man. Um, yeah. So I mean, we both we both come from an area where it's hard hats, work boots, lunchbox, and go to work. You mm -hmm. know, 401ks, the whole nine yard. Mm -hmm. um, I see you wearing black boots, Steelers so. fan. Yes. Okay. I'm not. I, an I don't have any gold. I'm but, not an Eagles fan. I do right. have black and gold. Here, okay, there you go. I see it. <laughs> more of a hockey guy. There but, you go. Um, anyway, so you know him. He, I met him in, in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, he's ten years older than I am. Right. And we worked for the same company. Right. Um, when he moved back there to mm -hmm. get out of the heat here, right. and, and his wife wanted to go to nursing school. Okay. So we met there, and then he said, "You know what? I'm done. I want to move back to Florida." Um, and I, my daughter at the time, mm -hmm. three years old, I was okay. married. Um, and I'm like, Ooh, man, that's going to be the biggest sell for me right. ever. Like she, you know, my wife at the time right. just mm -hmm. didn't have any friends or any mm -hmm. family and didn't feel like she could just move. Right? right. So I had to sell that dream to her as well. Right. So anyways, what I did was I flew down here for every job that he would pick up. So every real estate agent he was in contact with, um, he would land a job and he'd say, look, I got one. Wow. Can you come down? Wow. Boom. We'd book a flight. I'd come down. We'd do the job. And that's how we started. Right. Right. Um, so basically taking that leap of faith was very, very scary. Mm -hmm. Um, but we had a vision right? and we weren't going to, uh, let anything get in the way of that vision. Right. Um, we wanted to start our own business. Uh -huh. So that's pretty much how we did it. We just said, look, 
whatever comes our way, right. we're gonna we're just gonna take it on, and uh, we're just gonna roll with it. Do you ever undervalue yourself? Uh, yes. <laughs> I only <laughs> ask because I've done it. Yes, you know, plenty, so. <laughs> plenty of times, especially when we first started. Right. We were we were thinking that we were worth more. Right. From the start. Right. And we were like, man, how can, we can't land jobs. Right. Like, why aren't we landing jobs? Uh -huh. And guys were doing it for so cheap, especially back then. You know, the height of the market. You know, the housing market was going up, and then all of a sudden it crashes. Right. So now every contractor became general contractor became a painting contractor. Right. Now all the painting contractors. Were I like, knew a guy that 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 did jumped that. in on a painting contractor. And and he was doing that because he could. Yep. But knew nothing about painting. Hundred percent. Right? So we were having to now deal with. Uh, an influx of just contractors that did, knew nothing about our craft, our right. trade, and on top of the millions of other painters that were doing it. Right. And nobody wanted to spend money because now their house is not worth what they Homes what are, was. are sitting. They're not. They're not. Selling. So it was really tough. Right. But I said to my my partner, I said, you know, if we're going to build a business in a recession. Right. And if we can build a business in a recession and come out the other side still in business, we will be in business longer than any of these other. Hundred percent. And, and yeah. because you won't, you won't quit. Right. And that I met, I, one of my first mentors I ever met, I actually met him in the Ross, like right over there. And, um, one of the things that he said to me was, is, and it was when things were really tough and they were just it, like thing we were getting out of it, but nobody could really see it at the right. time. And so I said, you know, I don't know why I got into real estate in the middle of a recession. He was like, no, you did the smartest thing now, because if you can sell now, <laughs> like you can sell anytime when it, it and you learn the, the things that. Like one of the things I hated was the idea of being a salesman. Right. I hated it because I had <clears throat> terrible examples of salesmen all my life. That's all I see. Everybody remembers the bad salesman. Right. Everybody. And nobody, nobody remembers the guy that actually sat around and took care of you. And took care of you. Because right. you don't see that person as a salesman. Right. You know? So um, how do you like today? I, and, and I think this, this is what the, one of the, if I can, if I, there's two things I want to, I really want to do my entire life. I want to change the way that real estate is done. Like that's a, a big thing because real estate as a business model operates like it's in the 1960s still. <laughs> so, so does my industry. Yeah. To tell you the truth. I, mean, I mean the prices for what I do right. are still like 1980s. So that's like crazy. So I have got, I go into competition with guys that, that are still giving prices that mm -hmm. uh, for instance, my dad, who's right. one of my, he's retired, but he's right. one of my, my uh, job foremans. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I got tired of having him say, hey, meet me at Starbucks. I'm like, dad, I gotta work. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, I'm gonna put you to work. Uh -huh. So now he runs all my work. He's been in the trades business his whole life, Dude. right? So he's like, I can't believe this is what you guys are doing these prices for, right? or these jobs for. Mm -hmm. He goes, this is like 1980s prices. Dang. So now we're now we're like, wow, now we gotta figure it do out. Do you charge more? Or? We do. We, okay. Well, Okay, so what we bring is I bring value, right? Right. So I want to bring yeah. I want to bring value. So any, any other painting contractor out there can go out there and they'll say, okay, I got to I'm going to measure this house. Right. I got a square footage price. Mm -hmm. This is what the can says. I can get X amount of square footage per can. Right. And they'll base the number on that. Whereas right. we what we like to do is I give you nothing but the absolute best products on the market. Right. So I offer for like instance my exterior home, uh, home paint mm -hmm. is a lifetime product. Right. I back everything up with a 20 year labor warranty. So that's where I had to start setting myself apart from everybody else is nobody in my industry offers a 20 year labor warranty right. on top of the lifetime that the product right. comes with. So dang, that's pretty good. So that just shows the confidence in our, in the product in the way we apply the right. product. We do everything to spec, you know, and it's working for us. And it's crazy when you operate on value. I like how this this episode is super business because they usually get into more people. But I like yeah. I really like how this has come together. It's more around business. But when you center your 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 product on value, um, like there's no. It's really like price tag is almost irrelevant. And it is. <laughs> it really is. So once you start seeing what you're getting for right. your money, mm -hmm. um, and the longevity of the product that right. I'm giving you plus the warranty. And I think the people that it helps you work with, it helps you get out of working with people that are going to be headaches. Right. You now know. you do, you will, <laughs> you're going to come happens. across it's one or two. It's still going to happen, but. You can't, you cannot please everybody, true. right? True and story. you don't, tr you know, I try to please everybody as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, 
Home Advisor is, uh, is is a company that we're affiliated with. Right. We get you know online. I'm familiar. Uh, anytime web based leads. Anytime right. a client needs something that I that I don't know, I don't have a guy. Yeah. Homeadvisor.com. Homeadvisor.com. So there's there's Angie's list. Right. It started I think in 1995. Right. Home Advisor I think started in 1998 or 99. Right. So I still don't use Angie's list because they make you as a consumer pay. Pay. Hey, I'm exactly. like why? Right. So everything, you get every, everything else is free in this world. Right. <laughs> So, so in the old days when the yellow pages would show up at your house right. and your parents or grandparents would say, hey, we need a painter and you would go to the peas. Oh, yeah. Find a painter. It's free, right? Yeah. So Angie's List is getting, you know, they're, they're hurting right now because HomeAdvisor is free. Yep. Right. So we wanted to consume HomeAdvisor. Right. Right. So after 12 years, we're five star rated. There you go. Uh, almost 200 reviews right now. Right. Um, and we're killing it just with home advisor. Dang. So I mean that that for us is a big is a is a big tool for us. Right, right. Well, it needs to be. I mean, it's kind of like you know, a lot of real estate agents pay Zillow for leads. Yep. So, but if you don't know how to use Zillow, hundred percent. And it's all. And I'm sure you see this in your business or your industry. People will say, "Oh, home advisor doesn't work." It's not the case. It's, you just don't know how to make <laughs> just, it work. You're just not using it right. Exactly. And, and it's and it's really easy to use. But, right. I mean, it, all you have to do is Google um, homeadvisor.com mm -hmm. slash visual enhancements. And right. we pop up 2014, 15, 16, and 17 business of the year award. Dang. 1% of all the contractors um, around the United States okay. can obtain that. Right. And we've done it since 2014. Wow. So, and we're a small little local business mm -hmm. here in, in, in Land Lakes. That's what I love. And right now we're in three states. Gotcha. Okay, so if somebody, um, what three states by the way? We're in Tennessee, Pennsylvania, and Florida. Awesome, rocking. So if any of you guys know somebody in Tennessee, Pennsylvania, or Florida, tag them up. Um, the other thing is, um, so now if somebody, who's the type of person that, um, needs something that you have to offer but doesn't know it everybody right oh really dang <laughs> um, <laughs> i mean there everybody out there either has a question mm -hmm. um they may, maybe they just had their house painted right but maybe they had they maybe it was the exterior okay uh, maybe they want to tackle the inside mm -hmm. maybe a couple of bedrooms right but don't want to spend the money on a contractor right something that we offer as well is um, we'll come out we'll give you a free consultation mm -hmm. on what we feel the products you're going to need right from the sundries you know your your brushes your tape right um, and all the way down to the paint right I try to I try to I what I like to do is educate as much as possible that's fun and I and I'm not asking money for it right like, like you, you get consumed by well, that's how the easiest way to show that you care yeah. is to tell somebody or is to share what you know it, Contractors, I do it every every day at the paint store. When mm -hmm. I go down there, um, and there's a contractor, they'll come in and they'll ask me a question. Right. Um, and and I give free advice on how to grow their business. Right. What can I do to help you grow your business? Before you got here, I was on a phone call with a guy who wants to buy wants to buy a Wesley Chapel. Wasn't sure, and I was just like, "Well, this is where the equity is going. This is where the, your money goes the farthest. So if you yeah. just look at if you're looking if you're going to stay here five ten years." this is going to be where, you, and he was hooked. Like after that, he's just like, okay, well, whatever you tell me. Yeah. And I'm like, now I feel bad because <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility. Right. <laughs> but uh, but it, you know, when, when people trust you like that, it shows you, it, it's, yeah. it's, and, and, it's and I mean, in my industry, everybody needs their grass cut. Right. Everybody needs their house painted at some point, or you know somebody that needs their house painted or their lawn cut. I mean, right. this day and age, especially in Florida, nobody wants to cut their own grass. Zero people. So <laughs> there's a million of us out there. Um, you know, uh, all I could say is uh, I offer the most right. for the money. Oh, uh, and and it's all you can do that because you're the best at what you do, probably. Um, yes. It's, it's yeah, <laughs> no. It's well, you know what? And I tell people it's like I'm when it comes to new construction homes, I'm the best. Yeah. But it's on purpose. Right. It's absolutely not. It wasn't an accident. It was because I went through that period of, I'm going to sell new homes to how the heck am I going to sell new homes? Right. Like, <laughs> and then sticking with it. Right. And going through it. Going, learning 
the what you need to do to be successful in that, exactly. in that niche. And then through that, through going through all the crap that nobody else was willing to go through, yeah. because when I started this, there were so many people that said, you can't get new home leads. Right. Like, how are you going to do that? And it wasn't like I was like, well, watch me do it. It was just like, I want to. Like, this is what I want to do. And this is what, I'm, nothing's going to stop you. Exactly. And that's really, you know, your leap of faith right there. You talk about the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to start their own business. Yeah. Um, but they let, you know, a lot of people let the fear yeah. of failure trump the feeling of victory. Right. So they get to that point mm -hmm. and then they stop because they're like, oh man, if I quit much this job, right. guaranteed paycheck, which they hate going to every, every day. 100%. Um, they feel like they're going to lose more. Right. But you have you have to lose something in order to gain more. Exactly. And that's what we did. I was homeless. No way. Yeah, man. Man. So when we came down here and we started this business, mm -hmm. um, I know this is a little off topic, but that's fine. Um, we started this company out of the back of my Ford Focus. Dang. And uh, sticking a ladder out the trunk. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we made it work. Yep. I went through three, uh, four repossessions. I was evicted from a house. Um, I foreclosed on a house. Wow. Went through a divorce. All trying That'll to happen. All trying, <laughs> all trying to build a business. But fortunately, the divorce was, you know, we're best friends. Right. You know, well, that's good. Really good friends oh, man. That's... We have a daughter together. So right. we, we, we did it for other reasons. Mm -hmm. But it was still stress that right. was added, added into everything of trying to build a business. So then when the, stock, when the housing market crashed, all that happened. And my partner and I said, this is never happening again. Truth. And it hasn't. There you go. So now we have employees and we're, awesome. we're running wild. How many people do you employ? Uh, it, here we have 20. And we're veteran owned and operated. Dude. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I try to hire vets. So if there's any vets out there, veterans, looking for work, um, you can get a hold of me. This guy. And um, I'll, I, I, I'm trying to teach guys a trade. Right. Especially, especially veterans to right. come home have no skill set other than running around with a rifle and the government just dropped you here. Mm. Okay, so we gotta make this quick because this battery looks like it's getting ready to okay, die. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, real quick, you got some paint here. What do you want to tell Okay, so about? Just, just real quick, this is what we, we are the leaders in cabinet painting mm -hmm. in my industry. Right. And this is just a little bit of the products that we use. Um, this is, a, we use nothing but PPG products. Right. They own Porter Paints here in Florida. So a lot of people in Florida have heard of Porter Paints. Right. But this is the only thing we use on all of our cabinets. Perfect. I go right over top of stain, doesn't come off. Good to know. All right, I'm, because I'm, I, this thing is gonna shut off yeah, in yeah, a yeah. second. What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Instagram. Instagram, at V-E Inc. V-E dot, dot I -N -C. Sorry. Yep. Ding, right there. All <laughs> Facebook, right. V-E Inc. or 813-420-5686. Boom, all right, we got that. Um, Chris, thank you so much for Thanks, being on buddy. the show, man. I appreciate it, this yep. is a great episode. And uh, if you guys have any coffee shops that you want me to stop at, or any people that you want me to interview, go ahead and drop a comment, like, share, whatever the heck you wanna do. Till we see you, uh, and as uh, my good friend Willie Lawson, who's the only person who loves Tampa Bay more than I do, as he says, get out there, learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Peace out. Amen.